But there were some pre-workouts that would make like, your arm go red and go all prickly. So you're like, well, it must be doing something because look what it's doing to my skin when it was just a skin reaction. <laughs> like Simon the Board A-hole here. Thank you very much for joining me as always. And I already know, you're like me. I've got this too. You have some kind of cupboard with random supplements just thrown in there. And it's totally understandable why you would do this because as soon as you start to get into weightlifting or going to the gym and embracing the fitness palace of love, the nutrition industry goes... <laughs> and they tell you you need to buy every single pill under the sun. Now, I'm always going to say this. I do like supplements. I think they're okay as long as you understand they're just going to give you a little bit of a nudge. They're only going to help you that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent. They are a supplement. You supplement them on top of everything else. However, there are some that need a bigger deep dive. So here are six that are a total waste of your time. And we shall start with six super creatine. Now, as ever, this is what all industries do after a while because everybody likes creatine and because creatine monohydrate has amazing studies that say it is going to help you in the fitness palace of love. Everyone sat down and went, well, wait a minute. How can we get people to pay more money for creatine? That's right. We shall just make some brand new creatine up. Because look, right now, if I go to the internet and I type in creatine and I push the go button, what type of creatine can can I buy now? Very nicely, monohydrate is the first thing that comes up. But then there's clean creatine, there's micronized creatine, there's creatine ethyl ester, there's creatine hydrochloride, there's buffer creatine, there's liquid creatine, there's creatine magnesium, there's creatine nitrate. We could do all this all day. And sure, if you've got the money and you don't care and you want to try one of them, go ahead. But why on earth would you start walking to Disneyland, which is over here, and decide to head in this direction? You already know that this way works, so just stick to that way, especially because it's the fast, the cheapest, and the most sensible way in order to get to where you want to be. And I know I always say that studies shouldn't be taken too seriously, and I do agree with that. But when it comes to creatine, there is such an overwhelming amount of information that says, oh yeah, monohydrate will help you in the gym. Just do creatine monohydrates or anything that's labeled super creatine or anything that's labeled mega creatine or this is 100% creatine, just stick it to one side. I mean, if it's working for you, good for you, go and do a backflip. And I am genuinely pleased because that's all that matters. But creatine monohydrate is the way and 99% of the other stuff has just had a few pounds or dollars knocked on the top of it in order to try and get your cash. Number five is test boosters. Now, I know we've talked about them on this channel here before, but I still get people messaging me on Instagram, cheap plug at Simon316, saying, Simon, how do I boost my testosterone? I found this amazing test booster, and it's like $150, and therefore I have decided that it must have some use to it. Now, I did this as well. I remember being in Holland and Barrett, a nutrition store over here in the UK, and they had something similar, and it was like 92 pounds. It wasn't that much. It was about 50 quid or something, and I thought, well, this must be the real deal. And it did absolutely nothing. I think it was just full of magnesium, which is absolutely ridiculous. And the one question you have to ask yourself is if testosterone boosters did work and they moved your testosterone levels up to a point that you would be able to build more muscle, why the hell would anyone be doing steroids? But if your option is to put a pill in your mouth and swallow it or to jab a needle into your ass, I mean, which one are you going to pick? Maybe you just really like steel and good for you. You're allowed to make these kind of assumptions, but there is nothing in the world that is going to boost your testosterone levels to that kind of levels unless you're doing, well, the stuff that we've already outlined. It's just something that somebody made up and they are using ingredients that can kind of boost your testosterone. But again, when you actually dive into it, it's usually things like vitamin D. I've got a video coming up about this soon as well. Everyone says, oh, vitamin D will boost your testosterone levels. Yes, if you are deficient in vitamin D to begin with, and that's the reason your T levels are low. So it stands to reason that you reintroduce the vitamin T, through, uh, vitamin D through an external source, and then all of a sudden your testosterone levels go back up. But if you super mega dose with vitamin D, do you think you're going to be walking around like Arnold Schwarzenegger? Like, just give it a second. Stare off into the distance. Does that sound realistic? No, it kind of sounds absolutely ridiculous. And that's because it is. If it was true, you just go and sunbathe and you get massive. Because don't forget, that's where your body gets its vitamin D source from originally. Number four, mass gainers. And the reason I don't like mass gainers is that if you're taking three or four servings a day, you are eating way over 4,000 calories. <laughs> Even if you're a hard gainer, I don't think you need to be up to those kind of levels, especially because when you actually look what a mass gainer is, it's just a bunch of powder and sugar in a tub. And I understand the ease of use. I understand you can just go, and all of a sudden you've taken in a bunch of calories. But it makes much more sense as far as I'm concerned. I know a lot of other people say this too. Get a shake. Put some whey protein in there. Grind down some oats. You could have peanut butter. You could have some spinach, some fruit, whatever the hell it is. You could make yourself a really healthy, nutritious shake, which is still loaded with calories. You're not paying an absolute fortune with it. And again, 
it's such a disgusting way to try and put on weight. I don't mean that in the oh man, you're absolutely horrible. I mean from a taste point of view, because it's whey protein and it's usually like dextrin or some kind of carbohydrate, some kind of you know sugary high carbohydrate and stuff. And that never tastes that good, not especially when you could make your own. You could be making your own mega smoothie and you're deciding to go with damn mass gainers. And anyone that says, Well, I take a mass gainer because it's got the nutritional facts on the side, it will take you five minutes. Whey protein, this many calories, peanut butter, this many calories. You could probably even have milk in there delicious wonderful everybody wants to drink it milk and still get away with it instead of buying like a 75 quid mass gainer tub so i mean they do work you are going to put on weight because again they're just full of carbohydrates but do you actually need that much food number one and two why wouldn't you do it a much better and healthier way because don't forget what's the most important word in health and fitness health moving on to number three fat burners now i like fat burners i think fat burners are fine as long as you actually understand that they're not a fat burner. They should be called like fat-aided burner. That doesn't even make sense. But the whole point is this. If you are not doing any cardio and you're not doing any exercise and you're still eating like an absolute goober, taking a fat burner isn't going to do anything. These work in conjunction with everything else you need and you can still get ripped and you can still get mega lean without even looking at a fat burner. So they are by no means essential. And that's the issue. People think they go once again, oh, dum -ba -da -da. that is never how it works. That's not even how it works when you do inject testosterone in your ass it takes some time your body has to catch up but with fat burners you're never going to get there you're never going to get there because you're not doing the hard work there is no excuse for not doing the hard work now as i've already said the reason i'm not totally against fat burners is because they can give you a little bit of a boost they can give you a little bit of a perk they're going to give you some energy so if you're in a massive calorie deficit you're going to enjoy that and yes they will help you burn a little bit more extra fat but what did we say at the start of this video one two three four five six seven eight nine ten percent that's what we're talking here and maybe they'll get you to your desired goal a few weeks earlier, again, I say that with some trepidation because I'm not 100% sure it is true. But ultimately, you just do not need them. And the problem is people think to burn fat, I need a fat burner. You are your own fat burner. If you ate nothing today and you went for a massive run, you will have burned some fat. You're not going to see it for a while because it takes some time for those visual sides to come through. So sure, absolutely take a fat burner, but understand it's going to make you feel all wibbly wobbly sometimes because a lot of it is stimulant based. And two, you are not going to get in the shape that you want unless you are putting in the time, unless you are putting in the hours. You have to be consistent. You have to be dedicated. I'm sorry to say it. You've got to be discipline and moving on to number two everybody's favorite ass supplement better alanine or alanine whatever the hell it may be and look once again you can go find the studies for this it is a good supplement it is a good drug it works it's not something that somebody made up and is just going <laughs> this will definitely make you jacked it will actually influence your workouts but the problem is if you're like me and you're doing traditional weightlifting traditional bodybuilding traditional gym going whatever you want to call it it is highly unlikely any set you're doing is going over 60 seconds right if you are you're absolutely smashing it but all of the studies and i sat down and i read these things show that better alanine alanine whatever the hell we want to call it only really comes into play when you are doing exercise that is longer than a minute i think one study i read said it really you know goes to town from one minute to four minutes so maybe if you're doing some kind of cardio it may work but again you're not really sort of approaching things in the same way but when it comes to lifting weights it's kind of irrelevant <laughs> because just when it's about to kick in you are probably done with your set and you're sitting on your ass going <sighs> and you're waiting to recover and i think the main reason it mostly goes into pre-workouts is because as you've already seen as i've already discussed it makes you feel all a little bit tingly wingly especially down in your rectum and i think some people it's like there was these old pre-workouts i'm pretty they're probably still, still out there now i'm not a massive pre-workout guy but there were some pre-workouts that would make your, your arm go red and go all prickly so you're like well it must be doing something because look what it's doing to my skin when it was just a skin reaction <laughs> like that's how ridiculous it can get so this isn't something that you need to take it's not something out of your way you need to look at when you're buying your pre-workout it doesn't matter if you take it it really doesn't but i just now some people are saying no this is essential this is like protein creatine you've got to get it in your diet you absolutely don't and look there's always an exception to the rule so you may be someone that does benefit but by and large all you've got is a scratchy ass. And coming in at number one is anything that on the back says proprietary blend. Now, once again, I've talked about this loads, but I'm going to keep talking about it because people keep asking me about it. Proprietary blend just means we're not going to tell you what we put in this because basically we just put some omega-3 fats, 
but we're going to pretend it's some kind of, oh my gosh, breakthrough, you're going to get jacked supplement. It's not. Otherwise, they would tell you. Why wouldn't they want to tell you? It's amazing you're even allowed to do this. Proprietary blend just mean we made it up. We made it up. It's not that good. We wanted it to sound really, really cool. And we wanted it to sound really, really clever. You should not want to put anything into your body unless you know exactly what it is. And before you take anything, you should get all the ingredients and you should Google it. So if there's 10 ingredients, you Google the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and so on and so forth. That's the only way you're going to know because if you do drink it and you feel like crap, then you're going to have to figure out which one is it. And if you're having a proprietary blend, and it always just says proprietary blend 350 mg. It could be anything. It could be 300 milligrams of salt, 300 milligrams of pepper, and you're spending your money on that, even though you've got salt and pepper in your cupboard, and you could just shake that right into your mouth. I mean, it's a complete waste of your time, especially when you're trying to build a physique, but it is totally something you could do. So I never like it when companies do that, and every single supplement company that I do trust in and I do believe in, I've never seen that on any of their products. They tell you what's in it, and they tell you how this stuff works, and it's up to you to buy it to see what is it worth it financially, is it worth it performance-wise, and everything like that. So once again, do I think you should take supplements? Yes, but do I think, ironically, you should take them with a massive pinch of salt? I absolutely do, and every single day, you can go on the internet, and a new one is being championed oh finally here's the massive breakthrough and it's not going to be the breakthrough for you i'm sorry to be that guy but just to underline it and just to reiterate you the breakthrough is going to be hard work consistency discipline and just making it your lifestyle when you make it your lifestyle it's not even hard work and nine times out of ten you're having a ball on that 10 out of 10 days you want to cry but hey ho we have tears for a reason now please do leave a comment below and let me know what you think about all of this maybe you really like one of these supplements and you want to get it out there well we can have a chat about it like the video share the video and subscribe click the bell ding ding if you know other videos going live, there will be a video on the screen. Please do give it a click. And look, I'm perfectly happy to do this, even with what I just said. Gorillamind.com forces us, Simon, you just come and get 10% off. And he'll be saying, Simon, you get some money from this. Yes, I do. But the whole reason I got on board with Derek and more plates, more dates to begin with is because I was singing the praises of his supplements because they're so damn good. Have they helped me? Yes. Do I still think they only help me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10%. Yes. But do I think they can help you? Yes. Do I think you need them? No. There you go. I like to be as honest and as transparent as I can possibly be. Although I will say, there is one brand new thing that you do need. They have now made uh, a funnel so that you can get powder into water bottles. I tell you, man, I've been doing that with pieces of paper for 25 years. Greatest invention in the world. Simon, why didn't you just buy a funnel? It's a great point. I don't want to talk about it. Also, on Instagram and Twitter at Simon316. Patreon.com for Simon316 for reaction videos. Uh, I've got Cameo. I've got Simon.bigcartel.com for merch. Merchandise news coming soon. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.